Our next panel is going to continue expanding on connecting in real life artists with NFT art. So we will be hearing from two artists, um, Nirali and Anna, and an expert in fine art and museums, Yamini, talking about the opportunities and value of NFTs for artists embracing the digital space. Welcome, girls. Hi, everybody. Um, I'm Nirali. Uh, I'm an artist, and I'm going to be moderating the panel today. So it's really, really exciting to be here. Really happy that you guys could all join us. We'll be actually discussing kind of the fine arts world as well as the NFT art space. So just a quick background on me. I'm an artist, a mixed media artist. I'm the co-founder and artist for Gold Bangle Club, which is an education community to bring in more women and ethnic minorities into the Web3 space, because we definitely need more of them. Um, I didn't start off in the art world. I was in the legal and the corporate space, which I know a number of people I've met here also have switched careers, so it's really great to hear. And I'm going to hand over to Yamini and Anna to introduce themselves. Hello, uh, I'm Yamini Mehta. I started my career in the traditional art world sense. So um, I worked at both Christie's and Sotheby's, the auction houses, for total of 20 plus years, and I'm here to really look at how the NFT space is dominating and affecting the art market, and especially for when I was leading um, Indian art auctions, I, I did at that point in time try to develop and democratize the auctions as much as I could. and. Um, bring in more female artists, bring in um, different types of artists and media. So maybe I was a little bit ahead of my time. And at the moment too, I'm also um, working with the Arts Council UK. And what we're also trying to do is see that um, when people donate works or give cultural gifts, that it is spread out throughout the UK, but also looking at hopefully diversifying the collections within the national museums here as well. Hello, everyone. Hello. <laughs> uh, I'm Anna. I'm a digital artist. I quit my corporate job about three years ago uh, and to become an artist. Uh, I'm really passionate about art. I'm really passionate about Web3. Um, I think it's going pretty well now with my NFTs because I've I've sold about 14 pieces on Foundation and about 40 artworks on OpenSea, which is more like profile picture collection. So everything is sold out now. I can definitely say so that I'm not afraid of this bear market, <laughs> and I let's hope for the best. <laughs> Awesome. Um, and actually, Anna, I'd like to ask you a question on that. How have you felt kind of quitting your job and entering the art space, but going straight into NFT world and digital art? So it was about three years ago, I think, uh, right after the lockdown began. And I decided to just start everything from scratch. Um, started to do what I wanted to do my whole life uh, because I was really passionate about art. And yeah, I just bought an Apple Pencil and started to draw and I just fell in love with digital art from the, I don't know, first moment. And it was, it's been quite an interesting journey for me because uh, since I entered this digital art space, um, I participated in various interesting social campaigns as well. So, for example, one of them was dedicated to doctor support. It was here in London, organized by W1 Curates. Uh, maybe you have heard about it. So. Uh, the second one was about um, hate is a virus campaign, so it was dedicated to support Asian American community uh, within this lockdown period. And it was interesting case, I can say, because I did an illustration for this campaign. I posted it on Instagram, and uh, it went viral on social media. So I just literally was in shock when my friend told me, oh, Orlando Bloom <laughs> reposted your art on uh, his page, and he tagged me, literally. So my mom was really proud about it. <laughs> well done. It, so it's, it's really great, and I can definitely say so. And the last campaign, that, which I really like, it was organized by uh, Art Crush Project. It was open call um, to support Iranian women. Mm -hmm. So I can definitely say that 
we 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 as an artist we have to join such campaigns social campaigns we because art is a social force and every time we have this opportunity we have to participate in it yeah i i couldn't agree more and kind of have more of a voice in that area um was there a reason that you picked kind of the digital art route versus the traditional art i know we've been talking before that you really love oil paintings and kind of traditional art uh so um painting was like a hobby for mm -hmm. me so i just painted once a year for my grandmother with oil <laughs> but then i realized that it's a digital art so i don't know i i don't know i just saw a video on youtube and started to to paint on my ipad and i i was like okay let, let's go for it it's so like convenient you can draw everywhere uh, I don't know, in any place you want and yeah. More accessible and... Yeah, yeah, definitely. Interesting. And um, Yamini, I know you've come from a fine arts world, a very traditional arts background, which is fantastic because I think we need a lot more people from you, your kind of area in this space to kind of maneuver it going forward. But tell me, like, how did you, like, how's your experience been in the fine arts world? I mean, I, I would say that it's, it's been evolving um, and especially because we're, we're just seeing too, like how the gallery construct and the museum construct is now looking at this mm -hmm. NFT space, which is, again, fairly new for all of us. Yeah. And I, I started as a skeptic, to be honest with you. Um, and, and that's because a lot of the art that I was handling, um, you know, like starting from the side of the cla a classicist, classicist, you know, being, you know, working with art that's 5,000 years old to something that's created yesterday is a huge divide. And, you know, one, one of my former bosses would say, you know, we, we deal with half the world in all of time, which I think is very poetic. But now, um, you know, coming in as a little bit of an insider outsider into a new art space, we're also looking at it, and a lot of my clients who bought paintings, sculptures at our auctions, you know, that they're they're curious. They want to know. I mean, is this a fad? Is this um, is this here to stay? And and that's I think one of the interesting challenges is there's so much information that's mm -hmm. kind of coming at them, and they need maybe some some ways to filter. So. One of the key messages that I'm getting from attending these conferences is how much um, you know these digital art spaces are about building communities and about um, sort of dem democratizing the space. But you also need the flip side. You need the curators, the critics, the gallerists to also help filter the space too, ultimately. I think that's a, an interesting point that you also made about skepticism. Um, and I know when I entered the space, I was also skeptic. I, I didn't know where I fit in, I think is probably why I was quite skeptic about it. Um, and also the kind of lack of information that I could access mm -hmm. um, until, you know, I got, like you, went to conferences, got into it and was like, ah, oh, actually, there's a whole beneficial aspect for artists and creators, especially with kind of the blockchain technology, the provenance, which in the art world, I guess, from especially a historic time, being able to say that this particular piece is from Rembrandt or whoever from an art space, that's a big positive and plus from blockchain, blockchain technology. Um, what other kind of challenges do you see that kind of head in to our future when you try and think of a world combined between NFT art and the fine art space? Well, I mean, I think, again, to that um, a lot of the big collectors. I mean, unless you have, you know, some money, some investments to take a punt, which many of them are doing. And that is why, you know, we're seeing my, my former firms, both Christie's and Sotheby's, really investing heavily into the auctions of this space. But then, you know, I, I feel like you have to kind of separate what is the collectibles and what is the sort of fine art aspect. I, I feel that mm -hmm. because, and, and that's where I think the curatorial aspect is really kind of important. And, um, you know, one of the other things too is also um, looking at a lot of the art that's being created, but it, 
it still has to have some kind of meaning and quality to it. Um, you know, so how a lot of us see the NFTs is that maybe it's, it's a tool, it's a means to an end, it's a goal, but it's not always necessarily the work of art. Um, it could be, it could be, it could be multiple things. And, and you know, that, that's really kind of the, the wild, wild westness of what, what we're seeing. I, I remember speaking to you earlier today and saying that I feel like, I feel like, you know, running a shop where all the gold mine prospectors are kind of coming in and you know it, it, it's it's that that kind of craziness because every day everything is changing in the, in this field so until there are maybe a little bit more standards that are being applied, um, maybe there will be more regulation that might be, some people might be against that, some people might be pro that, but that will, I think, bring more people um, to be comfortable in this space too. Yeah, I think um, providing kind of that security blanket of knowing that the regulators are also there helping and kind of observing so that if something does kind of go wrong, that they can jump in. Um, and I think that's an interesting point. And maybe from a collector's side, that's something that they're probably thinking of if you're moving from collecting fine art and physical right. pieces to digital. Um, but I know, Anna, when we've talked before as well, you've mentioned that your digital art, you're actually curating collectors. Um, and that's something that, as a near and real life artist, I would struggle to get into the fine arts world and be able to do that at such an early stage in a career. Um, in the art space. So do you want to talk a bit more about like kind of how you've found like the advantages of being in the digital space and actually being able to have one-on-ones with your collectors? Yeah, sure. I just, um, I was thinking when I started this digital art painting, mm -hmm. I was thinking why I, it can be as valuable as oil paintings or like fine art. So I put my soul into this painting. What should I do now? Like, of course I can do commissions where I can sell prints or anything, but it's not like, this, it's not as valuable as oil paintings. So I was um, thinking and I was really happy to <laughs> discover, so a friend of mine who is actually uh, one of the founder of Arts Dao, they based in Dubai, so he literally explained me everything about NFT about a year ago. Mm -hmm. And I was like, oh my God, this is what I need, right? <laughs> this is what I need, I, this, I, I have to enter this NFT space. So, Everything was, is, was new for me, of course, and I, I remember the first question that I asked him was, okay, NFT, what should I do now? Should I go with this 10K project? He was like, well, that's, just, <laughs> that's the spirit, but no, you have to, you're an artist, you're like one of one artist, you have to build your community, you have to tell about yourself on Twitter, you have to share your work, you have to communicate with other artists, other collectors to comment them, to, I don't know, join spaces, to run your spaces, and this is, this was so helpful, of course, tweet uh, GM every day on Twitter, I was like, what's going on here, but um, <laughs> yeah, it's, it was the only way to enter this space and I started to build my community slowly, like on Twitter it was about one, uh, zero, zero followers, right? Uh, now it's about seven, seven thousands. So I started to, to communicate with people. Um, I started to run my own spaces to educate my artist friends for, I don't know, it could be cybersecurity theme or it could be about marketing. So I, I was trying to help everyone. Um, how my friend helped me, right, uh, a year ago. So I'm, I'm so grateful to him. And I think it's all about education, um, your community. If you know some something valuable, you have to share it. Mm -hmm like uh, with your friends, with your community, and you have to be present, I think, in this space, because it's not about, for me as an artist, I don't know, it's, it's not about selling something, it's about telling about yourself, telling your story, because actually you, you never know who can be your next collector, actually, because I have a really great um, example. Uh, when I minted my first uh, artwork back then in January, I think, and um, one person, so he, he bought a few uh, artworks and he texted me saying like, Anna, I'm, I'm like a fan of your art 
But I'm so grateful. Like, do you remember this campaign, Hate is a Virus campaign, when, mm -hmm. when you supported Asian American community? I saw this artwork, like, uh, I don't know, uh, more than a year ago. You weren't even in NFT space. And I was like, oh my God, you, you're so supportive. How can I support this girl? How can this, I support this artist? So, and this was this, the option for support me. So it was like really amazing. I like didn't expect it to be so. I think that's fantastic. And when you build relationships with communities, with collectors, and kind of just the people around you, you don't realize how much of that actually impacts your own artwork in terms of even creating, but also then building up your career and kind of as an emerging artist and kind of building up a portfolio as well. And so um, I know we've got just under 10 minutes left. It'd be great if we could just quickly kind of touch on like the barriers that you've faced though in the NFT space that you feel like if you were to kind of transition out to in real life art? Um, so I, I think um, until we are in, in this NFT space as an artist, we, we don't see any barriers because obviously everyone understands what does it mean, what like uh, that NFT, that art is, digital art is valuable, that it could be an asset. So, but once we are like stepping out <laughs> from this NFT space, of course I can see these barriers, but only because of maybe, uh, like the only way I see it, we have to educate everyone. We have to collaborate with traditional art world. And what I see, this, this is so amazing that now we have this like new community of collectors of digital art which are entering from crypto sphere to this art sphere. So it's, it's great. And I can see, I see many, for example, art curators from traditional art world who is entering this NFT space, curating different platforms, different collections. And the perfect match, I think, for example, if they are from traditional art world, but at the same time, they are learning about crypto, they are learning about NFT, they understand what's going on. So this is like the, the perfect uh, match for me. So actually, and of course, I'd like to see maybe more galleries which are displaying digital art and NFTs. For example, let's take um, here in London, we have Unit Gallery and the NFT Gallery who just Oh, oh, like they are displaying digital art art um, right now, and of course, I'd love I'd love uh, to see more such galleries around yeah. the world. I think um, we've also had like a number in New York, and the Maddox Gallery has also done um, a bit recently as well with NFT artwork. And um, I know, I guess, as an in, in real life artist, a lot of the barriers that I've come across, and a lot of the artists that I know that have come across, it's like the cost of exhibitions, the cost of getting yourself to a gallery, but also then once you're in a gallery. Do they really market you? How do they market you? Are you getting the exposure you want? Because you have to pay for that gallery space and then also the commission that they would take on top. Um, and I think, Yami, what I'd find interesting from your side is coming from that space and kind of the museum area as well is what barriers do you think that we could kind of overcome with using NFT artwork and how we could kind of propel the art space forward combining the two worlds? I mean, I think we're starting to see that um, also in the secondary market. But what I think and believe strongly enough um, is that a lot of emerging artists, young artists, are really working in a primary market. And you need to have a strong primary market before you start to see a lot of these works showing yeah. up in the secondary market because then it becomes highly speculative. And, yeah. you know, we're... we're starting to see that a little bit with, say, the, the Women of the World project where one work would sell for, you know, equivalent of, what, one, e one ether, and then all of a sudden it would be 300 when yeah. it's resold. Um, I mean, I think that in parallel, I, I, I think what you're doing is the right thing. You're, you're working both in the digital space, but you need to have those opportunities and, and to network with Again, the the curators. There there are many many new tastemakers and would be tastemakers who are coming into the field as well, and that that's I think opening up a lot more than say where we were even five years ago, two years ago. But um, you know, I I think that one of the other things that this space also is is going to change dramatically and radically is that. Um, 
a lot of artists that I know that they, they, you know, the, the, they quibble about the fact that anytime their work is sold or resold, they, they lose control of it. They um, lose, um, they, they don't get any money off of the resale. Yeah. And I think that could be the biggest game changer, I feel, in the art, art space. Um, when fine art also kind of takes on with the use of this technology and blockchain to to then um, have that ability to for for artists to still keep making um, money on on the work that they make and you know then you have a whole infrastructure that's built around that the foundations the the um, you know to to keep that work of art alive um, even even what potentially when the work isn't. And an interesting example was a Sotheby's auction two weeks ago where the artist known as India's Picasso, Makbul Fida Hussein, yeah. he, he was 99 years old and his family is now using NFTs to sell art from the estate, mm -hmm. but also to um, make sure that it ha that there's a provenance chain that, that's, that keeps going. And, for, for those of us who are art historians, this is what will, um, you know, help us going in the future. Because we have to see this as not just what is good and, and for today, but, mm -hmm. you know, hey, we have to have also a long-term view yeah. about um, fine art in, in this yeah. space. Yeah, and I completely agree with that. And I think actually what's interesting when you were speaking is that when you think about it, actually what's happening is with the royalties that artists get from the resale with NFTs, they're actually able to then be contacted by their collectors who are then buying again for the future. And what that does is it creates that kind of maybe old school Patron like- Patronage, which, yes. Exactly, which we don't see anymore as much in the in real life art world. Um, where like, for example, you'd get like Da Vinci who was sponsored by whoever to be able to live off art for like a couple of years at the very least. Um, and I think it's very, very exciting that that's now coming back in where the collector isn't having to go through a gallery to be direct to the artist and therefore, Anna, in your experience, support the artist. Um, they're actually able to reach out and actually continuously support you directly, which is fantastic. Yeah, I just wanted to say that, um, of course, I sometimes I collect too and I, I want, if I, I, I just, I want to support my artist friends. So mm -hmm. why not? if if I collect uh, some any artwork, of course I want to promote this artist. So it's it's like um, I don't know. It's an amazing world uh, world uh, when you can become friends with your collectors and vice versa. Mm -hmm. So I really love this space. Yes, um, we've got two minutes left on the clock, so I'm going to ask you one very quick question, and you have literally like 35 seconds each to answer. If you were able to have one thing in future for the NFT and art world combined, what would it be? Good question. I just, um, I don't know what can it be, but I can definitely say that the only way <laughs> we have, we have to collaborate and educate people and see what we can have in the future. Because I literally don't know. It's going so, it's a wild <laughs> west, well, right? Wild, wild west, so yeah. who knows who, who, I don't know, what will be a year after. Okay, awesome. So, and Yamini? Yeah. Oh, this is a hard question. Sorry. I mean, Damien <laughs> Hurst had his drop of, yep. um, if, if I could, I'd get one of each and see which way each goes. Oh, fantastic. <laughs> hedge your bets on both I'd worlds. I'd hedge, yes. Brilliant. Um, yeah, and I think for me, I would love to be in a space where more artists can actually physically live off their artwork um, and also be like Damien Hirst, where actually you can shred your in real life paintings because people actually want your NFTs and they don't want the physical piece. It's extraordinary. Yeah, yeah. fascinating. Um, but yeah, I think our time is up. Thank you very much, everybody. Thank you. Thank you.